Hello and welcome to this lecture on audience. You're like, well, what the heck could this lecture be about? This deals mainly with art, with writing, and considering audience when it comes to that. So let's take a let's take an example here, audience. So imagine you have this group of people. If you look at this group of people, you'll see there is all sorts of different nationalities and ages and races and who knows the things we can't tell? There may be different types. Of, well, there's genders, obviously. Um, there could be, you know, sexual orientation. There could be different religions. So, pretty diverse group of, of people here. Um, what are the chances of all of these folks here liking the same exact thing? Uh, probably not very big. Now, is there something that they could all agree upon and like? Oh, sure there is. Okay. So, when an artist paints or a writer writes, he needs to consider, or she needs to consider, their audience. Who are they writing for? Now, if you look at this group of people here and then consider them, compare them to, let's say, this group of people. All right. Now, that is a group of people who has uh, not nearly as diverse. If you look at their clothing and um, their, or their makeup and how they kind of carry themselves, they are probably have a more common interest than the group before. Okay, so this group is pretty diverse, this group is less diverse. So chances are that if this was your intended audience, um, you would write a particular way to appeal to them as opposed to writing to an audience that's very broad. So that's the concept of audience as far as in larger things. Now, let's take a look at a, an example of this. Okay, well, let's say you are assigned to read something for school or your friends... Um, tell you there was a really good movie you need to go see and uh, or you know there's a, this museum where this really cool piece of art goes and you and you you go and you check it out and you don't like it let's say it's a book that you were told to read in school and you read it and it's supposed to be this classic and you're like I, I just didn't like this you know a lot of students uh, I've discovered and myself included uh, will think gosh what's wrong with me you know this is supposed to be this really awesome book and I'm reading it, and I, I don't like it, you know. What's wrong with me? Well, the answer is probably nothing, okay? Here's another, uh, an example. So I had to read the book 1984 by George Orwell, which is considered to be a, a masterpiece. It's considered to be uh, very influential, and we won't get into the details of the book. But I had to read it for one of the many, many books I had to read for my master's program. And I had to analyze it and tear it apart and, uh, you know, compare it to all sorts of different things. I mean, I spent, you know, a lot of time, you know, digging into this book. And I can, you know, spend hours explaining why this book was so influential and why it's considered a classic and why so many people, you know, are asked to read it in school fact is, I still don't like the book. I didn't like it when I read it the first time. I don't like it now. I just did not like the book, and I won't, you know, necessarily explain why for this video. And so I was concerned about that, thinking, gosh, you know, here I am going to be this, you know, I'm a writer, and I'm an English professor, and what's wrong with me? Well, the answer is there's nothing wrong with me. I have very good reasons for not liking this book, okay? But I can still appreciate and recognize that it is valuable. So, another example, a little more personal. Again, I am an author, so my first book came out, The Hidden Sun. Um, a lot of people liked it. Um, it sold very well. It's the first of a series, and I know I'm not saying this to promote myself. I'm trying to prove a point here. Um, it's very much a um, young adult uh, medieval action adventure with a twist of romance kind of a book. Um, so it really appealed to a fairly large audience um, who enjoy that kind of genre. Um, so I have written several other books, and one of the books that I wrote, another book that I wrote, is called um, The Mirror of the Soul, and I wrote this in conjunction with a musician named Krista Berg. Um, Krista Berg is um, was really, he's a songwriter, musician who has sold like 40 million albums. Uh, he's probably best known for a song called Lady in Red that was a big hit in the 80s. Anyway, so he had written a song called The Mirror of the Soul. I thought the song was fantastic, got in contact with his management, got in contact with him eventually, and uh, basically I wrote this book based on the song and based on his other songs, and I worked with him on this, and uh, and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. 
his fans absolutely love this book, and he's, most of his fans are actually not in America. He's got a huge following in Germany and England and, and different areas, and so this book sold very, very well overseas, but it didn't sell very well in America, where Chris is not nearly as known. Now, people who really liked The Hidden Sun, a lot of them, you know, read the rest of the series and liked it, and then they went to read The Mirror of the Soul, and they're like, oh, I, I don't like this. I don't like this book as much as I like the other ones. Well, you know, as the author, I was a little kind of hurt. And then I had to get it through my head. Okay, well, this is done for a different audience. It's really designed, um, this isn't really young adults. There's never anything bad about it, but it's a little more, um, it's a little older the way that it's written. It deals um, with some pretty complex ideas and concepts. And it's really designed for fans of Chris DeBerg, his music, and uh, people who love medieval genre. So even though, you know, so I realized, hey, you know, you may like The Hidden Sun and you may not like The Mirror of the Soul, and that's okay, because they're two different books. So um, the point of all this is that you can appreciate good writing or art or anything without liking it. Why? Because you may not be the intended audience. So as you read different things for school, for class, and you're like, oh, I hated it, so it must not be very good. You know, it's, there's no worth to it. Well, maybe not. I mean, there may be worth to it, and you can recognize that just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's not worthwhile. And you can recognize you may not like it because you're not the intended audience. So something to think about.